The cartels started a war that left an average of 12 dead per day. At times, all of them at once in the same place. Sometimes they would find five decapitated bodies here, one dismembered body there. It was horrible. Journalists are also caught up in the violence. Mexico is the world's most dangerous country for reporters after Iraq. Two editors of Zeta magazine have been assassinated. But Adela Navarro's publication continues to expose the cartel's crimes and the rampant corruption in Mexico. Between September 2008 and January 2009, there were 600 executions in Tijuana, and local police didn't do anything. Neither did the federal police. They did nothing. Many in Tijuana feel let down by the authorities. Fernando Osegueda never heard back from the police about his missing son. He joined a support group uniting families in similar situations. By now, most have given up hope of finding their loved ones alive. If rescue one tea, the one bond, it's okay for us. And we go to, to the cemetery and put the body and the church and print, but we have uh, one place to go to pray to my son. This is the same case to everybody people. Two years after Fernando's son was abducted, a high profile arrest appeared to be a breakthrough in the case. In January 2009, a man called Santiago Mesa was detained. A humble bricklayer from Sinaloa State, he'd migrated north to Tijuana, like many, in search of a job. He found one. Mesa confessed to disposing of the corpses of people kidnapped and then killed by the drug cartels. He said he dissolved the bodies and buried the remains in the grounds of his shack. Mesa became known as the Pozolero, the stewmaker of the drug lords. I was so scared hearing that. It's like a scary movie, you know. How can he say that? And he recognized he dissolved 300 body. And, and, and then, then we, we talk about maybe he can recognize somebody, but he said maybe. It's incredible, but the most people renew the, the hope because in this, in this time, we need to know what's up with uh, Fernando, 